Hello everybody and welcome to another video of our interactive read aloud Sharon Draper's book out of my mind. Um, I do have baby Duncan down here. Trenton is laying right down here in his little play mat so he might get a little fussy so you might see him make an appearance. Um, just because I'm excited about reading and I love to read, um, one of the things I really was wanting to do with Trenton was take him to the public library and expose him to a lot of text and literature. And with the shutdown right now, we can't do that. So um, I got a box of, uh, it's called a block of books for him that came in the mail and it's Eric Carl. And I don't know if any of you guys remember this author. He was a, he's predominantly a children's author. Maybe something you guys maybe would have read when you were little, but there's uh, 12 different books on the back by Eric Carl and about counting and numbers and shapes and letters. So just want to let you know that I really hope you guys are reading right now, other than just the video that I'm posting for you. I really would love you guys to be reading on your own because reading is so important no matter what age you're at. Obviously Trenton is just a little, a wee little guy, but it's important that he gets reading and he gets exposure to text. And I really want you guys, while this shutdown is going on, to make sure you're reading. I don't care what you're reading. Um, I don't care if it's um, a magazine. I don't care if it's instructions to a toy. I don't care if it's um, uh, an old book you have lying around or reading to a fr uh, sibling that's younger than you are. Just get some reading in. Just get some exposure to that text. It's really, really, really important. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump in. And this chapter is a little long. Um, and again, it's about, uh, or I'm sorry, Melody just uh, did the pre-qualification practice test for the Whiz Kids Bowl. And her teacher made a really nasty comment saying that if Melody Brooks can get them all right, obviously the questions aren't hard enough. So here we go, chapter 18. After school that day, I was grumpy and mean. Mrs. V had prepared a new stack of word cards for me. Penny was wearing one of Mrs. V's turbans, and she looked ridiculous. Plus, she kept singing some stupid baby song at the top of her lungs. I took my arm and swept the whole pile of cards to the floor. Who put salt in your Kool-Aid, Miss Thang? Mrs. V asked. She did not pick up the cards. Penny stopped singing and stood there blinking at me. I switched, to the money talk I switched the money talker to off and looked away. Fine, be like that, but you're going to pick up every single one of those cards. I stuck out my lip and stared at the wall. Penny reached out and shook my arm. I tugged it loose. She didn't seem to care and started singing again. Happy, 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 clap your feet. Happy, sappy, pappy, blow your nose. Biddy, body, body, jump and jump. She jumped and stomped her feet. Then she sang the song again and again. She was really getting on my nerves. I wish she would just shut up talking all the time, walking all the time, jumping and bouncing and singing. Just quit it. For just one moment, please stop. But she didn't. Hi, TD, she said. She put Doodle on my tray. I pushed the toy to the floor. Doodle, DD, she picked up the stupid raggedy thing and placed it on my tray once more. I knocked it off again. Leave me alone, I wanted to scream. Penny was used to things falling off my chair, so she couldn't know I was just being plain horrible. The third time she put Doodle on my tray, I swept it off with such force that my arm brushed Penny's head. She toppled over and fell to the floor. She looked at me, surprised on her face, grabbed Doodle and ran to Mrs. V in tears. What's gotten into you, Melody? Mrs. V asked as she rocked Penny on her lap. How could I explain? I didn't want to cry, but I did. I turned my wheelchair so it faced the wall just as the phone rang. Mrs. V looked from me to the phone, sighed, and got up to answer it. Oh, hello, Catherine. Catherine? I turned my chair slightly to listen better. Out of sorts? Mrs. V asked. Well, as a matter of fact, she does seem a little mopey this afternoon. No, I take that back. She's downright monstrous. Mrs. V caught my eye and made a funny face at me. I just glared at her. I'm not surprised. She got all the questions right. The child is brilliant. A lot of good it does me, I thought. The teacher said, what? Great, now everybody would know. Just thinking about it made me feel like pond scum again. In front of her classmates, what kind of professional is he supposed to be? Mrs. V looked furious. How did she react? Never mind, I already know. She's sitting here like looking, one of, looking like one of the, those blowfish we saw at the aquarium, all puff, puffed up and spinny. That's actually kind of close to how I felt. 
Thanks so much for calling me, Catherine, Mrs. V said. Yes, please call her parents this evening and I'll be sure to talk to them as well. I'm going to work on this problem right away. With that, she hung up the phone, set Penny down on the floor, put her hands on her hips, and turned to look at me. I figured here's where, where she hugs me and makes me feel better. So you aced the quiz and then bombed the follow-up? She said to me, indignation decorating her words. She flipped my talker back on. Why did she sound mad at me? I looked up in surprise. He hurt my feelings, I answered. So what? Mrs. V spat back. Kids laughed, even Rose. It was true, though I could hardly admit it. Even Rose had covered her mouth to stifle a laugh. Did you get the highest score in the class? Mrs. V asked, completely ignoring my attempt to make her feel sorry for me. I should have known better. Yes. Ooh. Hi. <laughs> Did Catherine help you in any way, even a little bit? No. Then let's get started. I looked at her a little confused. Started on what? I asked. On your study plan. You and I are going to practice, prepare and push. I'm going to quiz you and you are going to answer. We're going to learn geography, science, math, thousands of glorious tidbits of information. She sounded excited. You're okay. Why? I asked carefully. You know how athletes get ready for the Olympics? Come here, honey. Come here, baby. You don't want to play anymore? No? You want to say hi to everybody? Say hello. Say hi, fifth graders. Okay, are we going to continue reading? All right. <sighs> you know how athletes get ready for the Olympics? They swim early in the morning. Oh, do you feel better now? He just burped. <laughs> do you feel better now? <laughs> you know how athletes get ready for the Olympics? They swim early in the morning and late at night. They run around the track for hours and hours without a crowd to cheer them on. I can't run very fast, I typed. Then I grinned at her. Maybe not, but you've got the fastest, strongest brain in that school, and you are going to try out for the quiz team next week. They won't let me be on the team, I typed slowly. Oh, yes, they will. They'll want you, all right. They'll need you. Melody, you are going to be their secret weapon. Hold on, Duda. Do you want to reposition? These fifth graders are being very patient with you. You think? I know. Let's cut out all this fake feeling sorry for yourself and get started on studying. We have one week. I'm the coach and you're my athlete. Get ready to sweat. Sweat stinks, I told her with a laugh. So let's get stinky. But first, you are going to pick up every single one of those cards. I knew not to argue. She took me out of my chair set me on the floor, and left the room while I pulled the cards that I had knocked down into a messy pile on the floor. Penny helped. Then Mrs. V put me back in my chair, and we got to work. She was going to be a tough coach. How was the test set up, she asked me. A, B, C, D, I tapped. Multiple choice. Wonderful. Piece of cake for you. I wasn't sure about that, but I didn't disagree with her. She went to her computer and found a web page that listed every U.S. state and capital. Did those in school? I told her. Great, so we'll do them again. I fake groaned. Mrs. V then looked up the capitals of all the major countries in the world. Gee, there sure are. You're being grumpy. You're being grumpy, boy. There sure are a lot of countries. But once she read them out loud to me, I had the info stuck in my head. What's the capital of Hungary? She demanded. I knew the answer was Budapest before she even gave me the four choices. Boys and girls, I'm going to pause the video real quick because Mr. Grump over here, I think, needs to get ready for a nap. So I'm going to stop this video. There will be a part two. Check on for part two in just a second. Thanks, guys.